if, if we look at our own brain, which is an interesting uh, illustrative example, in your work with Tensor and trying to design uh, deep learning architectures, uh, do you do you think about the brain at all? Maybe from a hardware designer perspective, if you could uh, change something about the brain, what what would you change or do? You Funny question. <laughs> like, um, how would you? So do your brain is really weird. Like, okay. you know, your cerebral cortex, where we think we do most of our thinking, is what like six or seven neurons thick. Yeah. <laughs> like. That's weird. Like all the big networks are way bigger than that, mm -hmm. like way deeper. So that seems odd. And then, uh, you know, when you're thinking, if it's if if the input generates a result you can lose, it goes really fast. But if it can't, that generates an output that's interesting, which turns into an input, and then your brain to the point where you mull things over for days. And how many trips through your brain is that? Right? Mm -hmm. Like it's you know, three hundred milliseconds or something to get through seven levels of neurons. I forget the number exactly. But then it does it over and over and over as it searches. Mm -hmm. And the brain clearly is looks like some kind of graph because you have a neuron with you know connections and it talks to other ones and it's locally very computationally intense, but it's also does sparse computations across a pretty big area. There's a lot of messy biological type of things and it's it's meaning like, first of all, there's mechanical, chemical, and electrical signals. It's all that's going on. Yeah. Then the there's a t uh, the asynchronicity of signals, and there's like th there's just a lot of variability that seems continuous and messy, mm -hmm. and just a mess of biology. And it's mm -hmm. unclear whether that's a good thing, yeah. or it's a bad thing. Because it, it, if it's a good thing, then we need to run the entirety of the evolution. Well, we're gonna have to start with basic bacteria to create something. But imagine we, we could control. You could build a brain with ten layers. Would that be better or worse, or more more connections or less connections? Or you know, we don't know to what level our brains are optimized. But yeah. if I was changing things, like yeah. like you know, you can only hold like seven numbers in your head. Yeah, like why not a hundred or a million? Never like, thought of that. <laughs> like, and why can't like why can't we have like a floating point processor that can compute anything we want? Like and see it all properly, like that would be kind of fun. And why can't we we see in four or eight dimensions? Like, like it's you know, 3D is kind of a drag. Like all the hard mass transforms are up in multiple dimensions. So there's the, you know you could imagine a brain architecture that you know you could enhance with a whole bunch of features that would be you know really useful for thinking about things it's possible that the limitations you're describing are actually essential for like the constraints are essential for creating like the depth of intelligence like that the ability to reason you know yeah it's it's hard to say cuz like your brain is clearly a parallel processor you know yeah. you know 10 billion neurons talking to each other at a relatively low clock rate but it it produces something that looks like a serial thought process. It's a serial narrative in your head. That's true. Right? But then there are people famously who are visual thinkers. Like I, I think I'm a relatively visual thinker. I can imagine any object and rotate it in my head and look at it. And there are people who say they don't think that way at all. And recently, I, I read an article about people people who say they don't have a they don't have a voice in their head. They wow. they t can talk. But when they, you know, it's like, well, what are you thinking? They'll they'll describe something that's visual. So that's curious. Now, if if you're saying if we dedicated more hardware to holding information like, you know, 10 numbers or a million numbers, like would that dis distract us from our ability to form this kind of yeah. singular identity? Like it dissipates somehow. Right. But but maybe you know future humans will have many identities that have some higher level organization, but can actually do lots more things in parallel. Yeah, there's no reason if we're thinking modularly. There's no reason we can't have multiple consciousnesses yeah. in one brain. <laughs> yeah, and maybe there's some way to make it faster so that the the you know the the area of the computation could could still have unified feel to it but while still having way more ability to do parallel stuff at the same time. Could definitely be improved. Could be improved? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's pretty good right now, actually. People don't give it enough credit. The thing is pretty nice. The, mm -hmm. 